Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for the very last of the Civilization VI Leader Spotlights, where today we'll be taking a look at Gandhi of India, everyone's favorite nuclear menace. So Gandhi's first ability is known as Satyagraha, and it makes it so that he receives plus five faith for each civilization, including himself, that he has met that has founded a religion and is not currently at war. In addition to this, opposing civilizations receive double the war weariness for fighting against Gandhi. So Satyagraha is a situationally pretty decent ability just for getting faith. Uh, it's very good on m map sizes that have a lot of players in them. So, you know, if you have 10 or 12 players in a map, then you can actually get a decent amount of faith from this because there will be quite a few religions and quite a few people that you can meet and thus a lot of people to get that five faith from. So on larger map sizes, this is very good. If you're playing on small map sizes, this is just a terrible ability because you'll get very little faith at all from it. Um, in addition to this, the, the opposing civilizations receiving double the war weariness for fighting against Gandhi is not all too great. It can, I guess, make a little bit of a difference, but you're very rarely going to reach a point where the war weariness is going to get so bad that they're going to have, you know, barbarians spawning in their territory or anything like that. Speaking of which, I am going to do an in-depth video on war weariness very soon here, probably next week, so, uh, but, but really, yeah, double war weariness isn't going to affect people too much, so overall, uh, Satyagraha is a, it's a pretty decent ability, uh, on the faith side, but on the war weariness side, it just really is not all that good. Gandhi's second ability is known as Dharma, and it makes it so that he receives the follower belief bonuses in a city from each religion that has at least one follower. So Dharma is another uh, ability that is situationally kind of decent, but also a lot of the times just really, really bad. So if you're playing against AI, then Dharma is normally really, really bad because the AI has no idea what they're doing whenever they're picking religions. So a lot of the times they don't really pick very good follower beliefs or anything of the sort. So you're not going to be getting all that much there. Um, the other kind of conflicting thing with Dharma is that that means that you want to have other religions in your city. Um, and if you're going for religion victory or a religious victory, you don't really want very much of other religions religions in your cities, so um, that kind of makes it a little bit of a, a conflicting, uh, a, a conflict of interest thing with Dharma, um, but if you're playing multiplayer or something like that where you can maybe, you know, uh, work with your uh, your allies or your friends or whoever uh, to have them get good follower beliefs so that way you guys can work together and maybe, you know, get some good follower beliefs in your civilization, then Dharma can be good, but against the AI, I don't find Dharma to be all that great. Moving on to Gandhi's unique unit, we have the Varu, which is a special unit that replaces the Horseman. Uh, I have already talked about the Varu all the way back in the Chandra Gupta leader spotlight, which was, wow, that's, that's been a long time since then, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. Um, but the Varu has a melee strength of 40, which is up plus 4 from the Horseman, a movement of 2, which is down, uh, down 2 from the Horseman, and a production cost of 120, which is up 40 from the Horseman. And also, I, I, I had to laugh as I went back and, you know, looked at the stats that I had put in the Chandra Gupta video because they were just, they were so wrong. Uh, I think, I think I had both the, the melee strength difference and the movement difference wrong, so I don't know what the heck I was doing that day, but I evidently was not getting the right information. But uh, this this actually is the correct information this time. Um, in addition to this, uh, all adjacent units to the Varu will lose 5 combat strength, and this does stack. Um, so if you have 2 Varu adjacent to like a warrior or something like that, then that warrior will be losing 10 combat strength. In addition to this, the uh, Varu requires no resources, so it doesn't require horses like the horsemen normally would. So the Varu, I think, is actually, it's it's a pretty good, uh, unique unit. It is one of those things that, once again, it is a little bit more expensive. Um, the only issue, though, is that on Gandhi, I don't think it is very useful. Just because with Chandra Gupta, you were able to get that unique Costas Belli that would give it even a little bit more combat strength. I believe that it gave it more movement as well, so that would kind of make up for it being so slow. Um, but with Gandhi, you're really missing out on that. You really don't want to be too aggressive with Gandhi either, so you don't really make use of the Varu. Um, but the Varu is a fairly decent unit. It does suck that it only has two movement, because that makes it really significantly slower than the Horseman normally would be. Um, but overall, it is a fairly decent unit nonetheless. Moving on to Gandhi's unique tile improvement, we have the Stepwell, which is a unique tile improvement that is unlocked with Irrigation. It will provide plus one food, which then rises to plus two with professional sports, plus one housing, which then rises to plus two with sanitation, plus one faith once you research feudalism, and plus one food if adjacent to a farm, and plus one faith if adjacent to a holy site. Um, just note that that is not per adjacent farm and per adjacent holy site, that is just you get plus one if there is any, uh, any number of farms or holy sites adjacent to the Stepwell. So the Stepwell I don't think is a very good uh, unique tile improvement, it just really is missing missing a lot of things that Gandhi needs. Um, in the early game it can be useful if you're able to get it adjacent to both a farm and a holy site because then that's a plus two food, plus one faith, plus one housing uh, tile improvement which can be useful, uh, especially for the housing and the food. I mean, the one faith is nice, but one faith really is just not that much. 
Um, and then also getting plus one more food with professional sports and uh, one more housing with sanitation. Both of those are so late in the game that one more food is not going to make very much of a difference by the time you reach professional sports. And uh, one more housing, I mean, that can be useful, I guess, once you reach sanitation, because sanitation isn't too late. Um, but overall, the step well is just, it's not really that good. I really wish that it provided more faith early on, like bef uh, maybe plus one faith just without feudalism, just straight up. And then maybe even one more once you get feudalism, um, that would make it a little bit better. But aside from that, it's just really lacking to be very impactful, and I don't think it's a very good tile improvement. And now with all of this in mind, it is time to talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Gandhi and the Indians in Civilization VI. So for the first strength, the one thing that is actually good about Gandhi is that he is able to get decent early faith output. Um, this mainly just comes from his first ability that gives him plus five faith per civilization that he has met that is founded a religion that is not at war, which, you know, unfortunately has quite a few uh, things that, that it needs to be active. But uh, if, if you have met a lot of people in the early game, and if you have a lot of people in the game that are founding, reli that are founding religions, then this can get you, you know, 20 or even 30 faith uh, very early on in the game, which can be quite helpful because that will allow you to spread your religion a lot faster than other people. It'll allow you to afford a lot more missionaries. Um, so if you have that combined with Earth Goddess, then you actually can get quite good early faith output with Gandhi, and that just allows you to, uh, to get you a, a, a very good uh, head start with your religion. Unfortunately, though, that's really where the strengths end for Gandhi, and uh, he's just got weaknesses past that. So the first weakness is one that I've mentioned already, and that is uh, Gandhi really does not make good use of the Varu. Um, so unlike Chandra Gupta, who gets that uh, bonus movement uh, and bonus combat strength whenever he declares wars of territorial expansion, uh, Gandhi doesn't get that. So he unfortunately has to deal with the rather slow speed of the Varu. Um, you don't really want to be warring too much as Gandhi, because if you go to war, then you're going to lose that extra faith output. So you pretty much just totally negate that bonus. Um, so Gandhi use of the Varu is nowhere near as good as Chandra Gupta is, and it, it really makes it so that the Varu ends up not being utilized very well whenever you're playing as Gandhi. So that is one thing that sucks about him. Uh, the other really big thing with Gandhi is that he just he really lacks meaningful bonuses. He gets, you know, he can situationally get faith that is decent, um, but that requires that there are a lot of people in the game that have all founded a religion that are also all not at war. So that's a lot of, a lot of pretty, uh, pretty specific things that you need to, to, to satisfy there just to get that, that one bonus. Uh, so that is something that sucks. His, his second uh, ability that makes it so that he receives the follower belief of the other uh, religions that at least have one follower in his cities is once again just kind of, it, you're, you're, you're just hoping that the other civs have something that is a good follower belief that provides good bonuses for you and that you you are able to do anything that you can to you know get bonuses off of that and it's just so variable that it's it's very rarely ever going to be any meaningful impact uh like on your game so overall gandhi is just he's lacking a lot of bonuses he just needs more because He's, he's very, very close to being one of those civs that just has no bonuses at all. So, just because of how, how situational his abilities are, he's really just lacking in pretty much everything, honestly. And now it is that time to give Gandhi his tier ranking. So if you're new to the series, what I do is I give each leader a tier ranking in each of the four victory types, so domination, science, culture, and religion, and those rankings just kind of gauge the civilization's general proficiency at attaining either of the rankings. I give them an overall ranking as well, which takes into account such things as their spawn bias and their versatility, and that ranking just kind of gives you an idea of where they fall amongst the other leaders in the game. All of our rankings go from S to F, with S being the highest and F being absolutely terrible. So without further ado, let's go ahead and rank the last leader we have, Mr. Gandhi. So Domination is up first, and I think that Gandhi definitely deserves a D in Domination. You you generally do not want to be going to war uh, when you're playing as Gandhi, because that's going to cause you to lose out on some other bonuses. Um, I almost gave him a C just because the Varu is a good unit and uh, his opponents will get uh, double war weariness against him, but I don't think that's enough to really make him even slightly viable in domination, and I would much, much, much rather just have the bonus faith from uh, meeting people that are not at war. So for that reason, you're pretty incentivized uh, to not go to war as Gandhi, so for that reason, I think that he deserves the D ranking. Science is up next, and I think he deserves a C. It's pretty self-explanatory. He just really gets no bonuses. You can maybe get some bonuses from a religion or someone else's religion, but that is so few and far between that it's never going to be impactful. So for that reason, he is just average and deserves a C. Culture's up uh, next, and uh, once again, I think he deserves a C for pretty much all of the same reasons as science. He just doesn't really have any bonuses. He can get a few from his religion, um, but they're going to be few and far between. So for that reason, he deserves the C. Religion is up last, and I think that Gandhi deserves a B in religion. He's 
just slightly better than average in religion. He gets a bit of extra faith from one of his abilities, and uh, you can also get some other religious bonuses from having other people have their religion in your city, so I guess that is good. Uh, the Stepwell can provide a, a small amount of faith, um, but aside from that, he doesn't have any bonuses towards, you know, recruiting great profits or really getting a, a consistent source of uh, extra faith, so for that reason, I think he's just slightly above average and deserves the B. And for Gandhi's overall ranking, we're going to end on a high note, and uh, Gandhi deserves an F. He's just a terrible sieve. I don't think he's very good at all. Um, he can, I guess, kind of be good in multiplayer if you're able to work with your friends to get them to get good follower beliefs that then spread to you. Um, but aside from that, on single player, where these rankings are mostly focused, Gandhi is just not very good. There's, he's just had, he's he's lacking so many bonuses. He's so reliant on uh, certain situations to give him his bonuses that he does have, and for that reason, he's just so inconsistent, just so so lacking uh, in comparison to all the other leaders in the game, and he's definitely at the bottom of the barrel, so I think that is why he deserves the F tier ranking. So thank you everyone for watching, I have been the Saxy Gamer. if you enjoyed the video feel free to like, if not feel free to dislike, if you're looking for more Civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe, uh, I've, I've had a lot of fun going through all these leaders and making leader spotlights for all these, so hopefully whenever the uh, next expansion comes out we'll get some more leaders to do leader spotlights on, but uh, until then I have been the Saxy Gamer, thank you and goodbye.